Welcome back to the show. You're watching Capital Connection. We're broadcast live from London, Bahrain and Singapore. Well, let's get straight to our next guest. David Costa is with us now. He's dean at Robert Kennedy College and joins us live from Zurich. Thanks so much for coming to speak to us today. Uh, we have to start by talking about Greece, um, I think. We had uh, the vote passed in Parliament yesterday, but still another vote to come today. What happens next in Greece? Are we looking at uh, uh, finally a solution to Greece's problems or is there more still to come? Good morning, Becky. Well, uh, the vote today is expected to go actually better than the one of yesterday because the opposition uh, is called to vote positively on a number of measures, including privatization, where they will not agree probably is the increase in taxes that opposition in Greece does not want. In terms of short-term solution, I think that's certainly enough to calm the markets in the short term. But for the long term, for Greece, my concern is really without having a lot of measure which sort of spur and increment growth, is this going to be enough? because uh, by cutting salary, by increasing taxes, increasing VAT, the measure is really comprehensive and ambitious. I will still have a possibility for Greece to remain competitive and to grow at the same time. So that's really the big question to see whether in a year from now Greece will be in a better shape than it is today. Yeah, uh, Greece seems to be certainly a long-term uh, dilemma, but that aside, if today's vote passes, implement implementation is another issue, but leaving that aside, at least funding will start rolling around among the key banks in Europe. Does this mean that investors should start looking at the banking sector as a whole and find them attractive? I think uh, European banking, the European banking sector is currently on sale in Europe. So it is true, you do have banks with issue which still have to face recapitalization, especially after we are waiting for those uh, stress tests hopefully coming out in July. But you have banks that already addressed the, the recapitalization issue and are trading at extremely attractive valuation. So obviously it's not a trade for everyone, but in the long term, banks in Europe will benefit, for example, for increased interest rate. Uh, many of the retail bank will have great benefits and given the valuation I think now is probably a good moment to start looking at which of the banks now have already solved their recapitalization issue and present a good value opportunity for the future. David let's talk about oil for a moment the IEA making a statement saying that it could in mid-July potentially decide again to release more oil from its strategic reserves of course this was seen as very controversial in terms of the market what are the dangers of intervention in the commodities markets. Well, the dangers are very clear is that uh, intervention in the commodity market doesn't work at the same on, on the currency market. You can't print oil and essentially we are back at the point we were before. So is it really wise in a moment like that to really use your reserves for a situation which might not warrant it? So I think that given the unrest in the Middle East uh, and given now some positive sign, there might be still uh, some good growth throughout emerging markets, etc. Demand uh, doesn't seem to be now in, in a very bad shape. Uh, uh, releasing more oil might put some pressure on the price of the short term, but in the long term, in the commodity market, the supply and demand imbalances are what determine the price. So intervention, it's a very dangerous thing, especially where it doesn't work. Um, David, we know how bullish you are and you how bullish you have been when it comes to the state of Europe and also the de kind of demand that's been coming through from the emerging markets. Is, does this really mean that the recent IPOs, for instance, of Prada or even Salvatore Ferragamo and a lot of these luxury brands, given the kind of upbeat sentiment we're getting about Chinese growth this year, uh, this is more reason for investors to actually pick these up? I think this company have some of the of the unique uh, features that European companies have. It is first of, first of all is pricing power. This company, because of their brand, have a fantastic uh, pricing power, uh, uh, which can really give them a lot of margins uh, in good and also in, in relatively bad times. Uh, and secondly, they do really benefit from this growth, which is not priced in uh, uh, throughout the board. Both the, the shares you mentioned, Prada and Salvatore Ferragamo, which started trading yesterday, did extremely well. I think as a debut. On the, on the stock exchange. So over the long term, I think that consumer cyclicals uh, from European companies, which are still a very attractive valuation, will benefit from growth in emerging markets and represent a good investment opportunity. Yeah, and also the fact that China is considering cutting luxury taxes, that's probably another reason uh, uh, behind your uh, view as well. Thank you so much. Great to see you as always. David Costa, Dean of Robert Kennedy College, talking to us from Zurich. Overall here in Asia,